Is AI creative? Can a human using AI actually create something? Or is it all just recycled garbage and creativity with AI is really just dead? I believe there's an answer and in this video we'll be getting into that. All right, folks, today we're answering a hotly debated question, to put it mildly, uh, about AI and creativity. Because I see a lot of people out there claiming that because AI is trained on artistic work that has come before, that it has no ability to create. And that people who are using it are just using it as a crutch. They're not actually being creative, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I hear a lot of intelligent people on both sides of this debate hashing this out. Now, in this video, I don't think we're going to come to a, a definitive conclusion, but I do think that there is plenty of evidence to show that AI can still be creative, or rather humans using AI can still be creative. We'll, we'll talk about why that is in a second. But basically... It comes down to a few things, and let's just dive right into it. First of all, first of all, though, I want to acknowledge the fear, okay? There is a lot of the arguments that are anti-AI, anti-AI as a creative entity are driven by fear. And there's really a lot of existential dread associated with this. And I don't want to just dismiss that just because it doesn't reflect my views, although it does, you know, there, there should be a healthy amount of fear with everybody that is using AI. I'll just put that out there because it can do some scary things. Uh, but I want you to imagine just for a second that you are a professional author or a professional artist and just for the sake of quantifying this, let's say you've put in Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule. So you've put in 10,000 hours to mastering your craft. And now kids these days are coming in using AI and creating something that looks almost just as good, if not better. That feels threatening, right? That makes it feel like all that hard work was a waste. And I can understand why people would re would react negatively to that. And I, and I just want to put that out there because it's a real thing and I want to acknowledge that. And if I were not, if I were in that position, I might feel that the same way. I have not put 10,000 hours into writing, not yet. I've probably put in three or 4,000, I don't know, um, maybe more. But... Um, but that is a real fear, and I just want to acknowledge that straight up. But now let's get into the the real argument. Um, there is a really great book called "Build for Tomorrow," which is an action plan an action plan for embracing change, adapting fast, and future proofing your career. And this is basically a book about innovative technologies and how they are perceived at the time that they they come up. And it's almost always. Uh, by the broad community, either indifferent or negative. And only a few kind of entrepreneurial folks understand the potential for these technologies and bringing them to light. Um, and so here's just a few examples of this happening throughout society. Bicycles, when they were first invented, were considered damaging to society. Books were considered dangerous for, for women especially. Thomas Jefferson even referred to the novel as a poison that infects the mind. And cars, as my favorite, were known as devil wagons. And the people on the side of the street started throwing rocks at, those, at the people in those cars and saying, get a horse. Which, man, as, as someone who uses AI, let me tell you, that sounds eerily familiar. That kind of sentiment. And so I recommend you check this out. This book was written before ChatGPT came on the market and AI really blew up as, and people really started to pay attention to it. And, but, and it's definitely something you should check out if you want to, like it says, future-proof your career. Now, all of those technology uh, items aside, probably the best parallel to the rise of AI is the rise of photography, all right? Now, the thing about the rise of photography 
is that the biggest form of employment for artists was copying someone's likeness, creating portraits of people or families. And only the wealthy could really afford this. It wasn't a widely available thing because it obviously cost a lot of money to get a original painted portrait of yourself. And photography comes around and makes the whole process of of just capturing someone's likeness, remember, much, much cheaper, much more accurate, technically, even even with the sort of grainy black and white um, photography at the time, it still represented a more accurate picture of what was in front of the camera compared to what an artist might do. And this caused a huge stir among artists and um, there, there was a lot of concern for it. A lot of people not taking it seriously, having the exact same sentiment towards photography that we might have today. And in particular saying that it's not a creative thing. Uh, and I have a quote here from an artist named Henrietta Klopath, who in 1901 voiced in an issue of Brush and Pencil. She said this, she said, the fear has sometimes been expressed that photography would in time would in time entirely supersede the art of painting. Some people seem to think that when the process of taking photographs in colors has been perfected and made common enough, the painter will have nothing more to do. I feel like I have seen variations of that quote used to talk about AI almost verbatim. We're all afraid that AI is going to come and take our jobs. But here's the thing. Are art- artists still around? Absolutely. Are photo- is photography still around? Absolutely. And better than ever, everybody has access to really high quality photography in just their phones, right? Uh, and no one would argue today that photography is not an art, right? Photography is absolutely an art. In fact, uh, after the rise of photography, a lot of interesting things happened in the world of art. First of all, we figured out that photography can be an art on itself. Not all photography is, but it can be. And second of all, we started to see these huge movements in actual art, painting and illustration, that were completely outside of the box, at least up to that point. And I'll give you some examples here. Um, we got expressionism, cubism, futurism. We got artists like Victor Van Gogh and um, Picasso and a ton of different artists inventing these new art forms because guess what? Their main source of employment, aka creating realistic portraits of people, was no longer a viable career path. And so they started branching out into a whole bunch of new ideas and realism kind of fell to the wayside. And we got these amazing new movements in art, largely as a reaction against photography. And so I just want to keep that in mind as we move forward. Uh, And today, art is still very much around. Fine art, um, painting, illustration, all of, you know, graphic design now, that's another technology aided form of art. And photography is still around. And like I said, not all photography is art, but it certainly can be an art. And photography gave rise to a whole nother slew of art forms, including film and television and animation, which was kind of a combination of art and or like the original traditional type of art and photography in a way and all of that thing you know basically created a whole new group of of different artistic movements and technologies but what's this have to do with creativity and what's it have to do with ai as a creative thing well first i think we need to define what is creativity okay there are a couple of definitions for this Um, one of my favorites is from this book from human motivation by Robert E. Franken. 
uh, which says creativity is defined as the tendency to generate or recognize ideas, alternatives, or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems, communicating with others, and entertaining ourselves and others. So it's this act of creating ideas that are useful in solving problems, uh, communication, entertainment, all of those things. I think we could agree with that. Uh, Dictionary.com defines it a little more simply as the use of the imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work. Both of these definitions have the word idea in it or imagination, and that's going to be very important. Uh, But basically, I define it as the act of turning uh, new and imaginative ideas into a reality. It's taking what's up here in our head and turning it into something a little more tangible, something we can see or touch or feel or read, whatever the case may be. Now, I used to think that creativity was something I did. It was the action. When I was writing, that was creativity. I was uh, I was putting the words down and that was the creativity. The writing was the creativity. And I feel like for a lot of artists, you might think the same thing. When you're painting or, or drawing, that is the creativity. But I think there's actually, that's actually not the case. And I think we, this whole movement with AI has got me rethinking what creativity is and where it exists in the creative process. Uh, I think we often confuse creativity with the mechanics of art, meaning the actual brush strokes or the actual typing of the words. And that's actually not the case. That is not creativity. That is the mechanics of the creativity. Creativity is something that can come immediately before those things happen because creativity has to do with the ideas, right? Creativity is something that can really only exist in our heads. And then we take what's in our heads and through some mechanical means, whether through our hands or through our, you know, typing or dictation or whatever it is, we are taking those ideas from our heads and putting them into some form of existence. That is the creative process. So creativity lives in the mind, but the mechanics of the creativity can vary in a huge variety of ways, depending not only on what you're creating, but also how you're creating it and what tools you're using to create it. Uh, You could be using a camera for photography. You could be using a brush. You could be using a typewriter. Whatever it is, that is the mechanics. And the two kind of work together, but the creative, creative part of it starts in the brain. So... I believe this is something that we really need to rethink and reframe in our society is that creativity is not the mechanics of creating art. Creativity is that little spark that comes just before we start the creative process. Now, it might be overlapping a little bit. There might be little sparks of creativity every time I write a new sentence, right? I have to think about it. I have to come up with the idea, then type it out with my fingers to create that thing. So I think this is why it's difficult for us to really distinguish between the two sometimes. But the more I've been working with AI, uh, AI art and AI writing, the more I've realized that there, there is a difference between the creative part, the idea, and the actual mechanics of putting it together. Um, which leads me to my next point. AI is actually not creative. Now, you might be wondering, what, like, what? Haven't I been arguing this whole time that AI is can be creative? Uh, no, because AI is itself a tool. It has no consciousness. It has no guiding uh, will, at least not yet. <laughs> we might see sometime in the future, a few years from now, maybe. But as of right now, AI cannot think for itself. What AI does is it... Uh, mimics creativity that has come in the past. So for all of those using that this argument that AI is not creative be just because it's mimicking what other people have done, they're absolutely correct. That is true. However, when AI is used by a person, that person can then create new things 
that the tool wasn't originally meant to do and can create wholly different things that while trained on data that has come before is entirely new. And you can tell that this is the case by you look at some of the artwork that people have created with AI art uh, work. Uh, the people that are already trained artists are often the people producing the best work. Uh, just like photography, anyone can take a picture, but only someone that understands the composition and framing and lighting and all of these things can really produce a good piece of art. The same is true of AI. And so I believe that a person using creativity to produce what is already formed as an idea in their head, those are the people that can really use AI as a creative tool. And the difference is the AI is simply a different mechanical process from what we were using before. In the case of writing, it's replacing typing. In the case of art, it's you know, the, the brush strokes or what, whatever form of art that you, you choose to do. And we've seen this process of new tools emerging throughout history. Uh, we've talked about photography. Photography was a new tool of simp that simplified the mechanical process of capturing someone's likeness. But then you have the printing press going way back. Uh, and that was simply a new tool that simplified the mechanical process of painstakingly copying out books by hand, which is the only way to do it before that, that before the printing press, uh, literacy was so uh, rare because first of all, it was really expensive to learn uh, and really expensive to get your hands on book. That was a huge luxury. The printing press and all of the other literary related innovations that have happened since then have made information more widely available and lifted up the uh, floor, the economic floor uh, for people that want to learn to read because it, be it became so much cheaper to do. That's kind of what all of these advancements do. The personal computer, a huge one in my lifetime, um, the rise of the personal computer, which uh, replace the typewriter as the main way to write. It was much more efficient than the typewriter because you could erase things and go back and save and whatever. Uh, and it was much more efficient. But it also gave rise to things like uh, Adobe Photoshop, which is a new tool that really simplified the artistic process uh, almost as dramatically as AI has done today. Not quite as dramatically, but it was a huge leap in that direction. And then, of course, AI, I believe, is a new tool in the exact same vein that simplifies the mechanical process to create something, anything, much faster than we could have normally done. And if you're thinking that, like, well, AI is different because of X, Y, Z, I really don't think we can say that. I, I, I think if you look at history, if you look at all past innovations, AI is to us what those innovations were to people back then. It was a huge step forward. I mean, really, like we think of the typewriter as a very basic machine, but it was a big deal when it became widely available to people. And I, I'm sure to the people at that time, it would have seen as much of a leap forward as AI. Same with the car or with photography. All of these things are big deals in their time. And so that brings me to my final point, which is uh, my predictions for the future. I believe that AI is going in very interesting places. And I believe that we that this is going to be no different than past innovative technologies uh, that we've seen before, like photography and like others. In fact, let's go back and think about photography. What happened with photography rose? Not only did we get an entirely new art form, photography, but the traditional art mediums in reaction to photography started to go in completely new directions because the thing that they had been doing before, you know, recording people's likenesses on a canvas was no longer really a form of employment that they could do, that most people could do because it suddenly became so much cheaper and more widely available to record someone's likeness using photography. And so 
that gave rise, let's look at this again, to wholly new and interesting and innovative art forms like expressionism and cubism and futurism. And this is what I believe is going to be the case for AI and art and literature going forward. I believe that now that we have a new tool that dramatically improves the ability to create something out of nothing, the ability to get our thoughts on paper, uh, I believe that we are going to see movements in art and literature and music and, and anywhere that AI is effective. We're going to see movements in the same vein that we saw with with art around the turn of the century, um, the 20th century. Uh, and I think that will be largely as in a reaction against AI. So we'll see art movements come up that are new and expressive that AI can't do in some form or, or another, maybe because it hasn't been trained on that data or what have you. We're going to see new forms of literature come out that are going to be far more experimental than before. And I think we're about to see not a reduction of creativity, but an explosion of creativity, not just in reaction to AI, but also because of AI. Because for me personally, because I can create something so much more effectively and efficiently with AI and avoid the parts of the creative process that are my least favorite, um, I can then spend more time being creative on the things that I love the most and less time on the things that I don't like. And I can also take more of a gamble. I can create books that I wouldn't normally do because there isn't really a market for it. Before, because it takes so long to write a book, I would really only spend the time writing something I knew was written to market that people would like to read. Now, because I can write so much quickly, more efficiently, I can really experiment. I can try new things because it doesn't hurt me too much to spend the time to make that thing. And I think because of AI, we're going to see a lot of that as well. Those are my thoughts on AI as a creative entity. Yes, I agree that AI is not creative in and of itself, but because of what it's capable of doing, it is capable at simplifying the creative process, the mechanical process of creativity to such a degree that it is going to create an explosion of art and creativity in the future and that humans using AI can absolutely be creative and we will see leaps and bounds in the creative things that humans create using AI or in reaction to AI in the near future. Those are my thoughts. I'll see you in the next video.